Hey, it's Brubert. In this video, I'll be taking you on a virtual tour of the Borders Distillery so you can see what everything looks like when it's up and running. So let's go. Welcome to the Borders Distillery, located in Hoyk, Scotland. It's the first distillery in the Scottish Borders in over 100 years, the last one having closed down in 1837. We start the process with receiving barley from local farmers in the Scottish Borders. We're currently using the Laureate variety. As you can see, these are blow-in silos. The distillery is situated in the middle of a town so the traditional system of pouring into a sunken pit is not acceptable due to pest control. Once we filled the silos on a daily basis or twice daily basis depending on our shift pattern, we moved the cereal by conveyor to the back of the distillery to start the process. This is an Allen Roddick mill built by the team by hand. The only bit that is not made by them are the rollers which are made in Sheffield and we take in our Laureate malt and mill it to a specification that is 10% flour, 70% grist, and 20% husk. We fill the hopper up to 5 tons or 5,000 kilograms to feed the mash tent. This is the beating heart of any distillery or brewery. It's where we determine our yield and therefore our productivity. It's a semi lauder mash tun built for us by Forsyth in Rothis. Here you can see us mashing in where we add the milled malt with the hot water. And what we're trying to do is form a consistent and even bed in the mash tun. So when we put water over it, it percolates easily and freely into the underback. A mash for us typically takes between 4 and 6 hours depending on the time of the year and what we're trying to achieve. And once we're through the underback, we fill up the wash back. We use stainless steel washbacks because they're more energy efficient and enable cleaning in place systems. Then we'll pitch in 40 kilograms of pinnacle yeast into 24,000 liters of wash and we'll let it ferment for times that vary between 72 to 84 hours. But this will depend on our production scheduling. And our intention here in the mashing and fermentation process is to produce a base liquid which can be distilled to what will be an aromatic, fruit forward, quite sweet spirit. It's an amazing thing yeast. This is us during the growth phase, which is why the wash is so active right now. You'll notice that there are gaps in the glass roof to allow air to be changed every six hours. And given that we're trying to control the carbon dioxide being produced from the fermentation process, this is a necessary part of the mash house design. Here we have the still house. Our distillery was built in an old Victorian building and we fitted it in with a mezzanine system. So above you see the working parts and below you see the mechanics. Each still carries the name of one of the founders of the distillery. So from left to right we have John, George, Tim and Tony. After we finish fermentation we pump into two 12 and a half thousand liter wash stills made to our specification by Forsyth. And we run the wash stills much as you'd expect, 
We bring it up to around 96 degrees Celsius to separate out the alcohol from the rest of the liquid. These are manual stills. That's Chris, one of the first members of staff here. He'll turn up the steam to heat up the stills and the alcohol will travel up and down the line arm. You'll have spotted by now that we have quite sharply downward line arms, which lead into a condenser. These condensers are fed with water extracted from the river Teviate. The interesting thing about water from the river Teviate is that we don't have any pumps or mechanical equipment in the river itself. Instead, the water percolates under the riverbed and is collected in a sump and we suck it in via a pumping system. The condensers will cool down the alcohol, turning it back into a liquid. At this stage, it's now called low wines and is 25 to 30% alcohol and will be collected in a tank below. We finished the mash, finished the first distillation in the wash stills, and now the low wines will be filled into two seven and a half thousand liter spirit stills. You'll notice a bump or onion on these stills, and what we're seeking here is high levels of reflux and high levels of copper contact. Again, we have a steep downward sloping line arm indicating that we're after the lower alcohols. That's Finley, one of the members of staff. We set off the spirit still, and what we're trying to achieve is an average cut of 71.2% ABV. And when we're on spirit, and assuming we've got the yields right in the mash house, we're extracting between 2,000 and 2,100 liters of pure alcohol from each mash. This is the Carter head still. So the Carter brothers were apprentices of the famous Irishman Aeneas Coffee, who invented the coffee still. And what we have here is a hybrid of a pot, an onion, and a column. And then half of the column is surrounded by a water jacket. Within the column, you would normally expect to find plates. Instead, we use sacrificial copper, which are specifically designed copper rings, which are packed into the still. And what we're trying to do is get maximum copper contact in our Puffing Billy still to try and get the ethanol as clean as we can. This machine was designed with Forsyth specifically to do one job, which is specifically to take the new make spirit that comes off the spirit stills. The new make spirit that doesn't go into casks to be matured into scotch will be processed further in the Carter head still to make our gin and vodka. As you can see, the swan neck and line arm manipulate the spirit inside the still itself. Here you'll see the yellow davit, which is used to bring up our copper baskets from the floor. To make our vodka, we'll take the new make spirit through the Carter head still, and in the copper baskets, which sit at the top, will place a considerable amount of activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is a volatile substance which allows us to strip off flavors from the spirit, such as methanol and aldehyde, to produce a very clean vodka. There's Robin winding up the baskets, probably not her favorite job, In goes the baskets, there are four of them, which are specifically designed to fit inside this tub, all made of 100% copper. The more copper contact, the cleaner the spirit will be. 
Down goes the lid and it's shut to prepare for starting up the Carter head still. We don't necessarily have to extract flavor. Using the same process, we can impart flavor by taking a selection of botanicals into the baskets. These are some of the botanicals we use to make our William Kerr's gin. It was named after William Kerr, a famous plant botanist from Hoyk, and he was one of the most successful plant hunters of all time. We'll add a mixture of our botanicals with specific ratios into our four copper baskets. If you alter the ratios, you can alter the flavor because the ratios are determined by the known chemical volatility of every element. Everything is carefully weighed and added in the exact same proportion to each of the copper baskets. By using this process and assessing the chemical volatility, we're able to sustain a reproducible spirit. In both cases, whether we're extracting or imparting flavor, when we condense, we take our first cut at 94.5%. Once the spirit is collected from the Carter head still, it will be diluted with product water to the correct ABV, and then we can bottle it and sell it in the shop below. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Borders Distillery. If you'd like to learn more about the Still House, Mash House, or Carter Head Still, please check out my other videos where I go more in depth about those distilling and mashing processes. In the meantime, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more distilling and distillery videos. This is Brew Bird, sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.